Hello. Say you are the proud owner of an ANET A8 or one of the clones like this Tronxy 802M. And you haven't you just you just put it together. <clears throat> and now you want it to print really well. The first thing you have to do is level your bed. And what you want to do is find a level. And then completely get rid of it because that has nothing to do with leveling your bed. What you need to do is level the bed in regards and in relation to itself and the rest of the rig. So what I do is, and that means every space between the shuttle and the hotbed itself has to be the same on all the sides. So the best way to do that is with a spinner bearing. You put the spinner bearing in between your bed, just like that. You tighten down your screws until it just makes contact with the bearing. And then you do that over here. And then you move, and, oh yeah, and you, you, make sure, you make sure this is turned off. You slowly pull your bed out and you do it over here. Okay, and then you and, and then once and when and then you might have to do that like four or five times, making minor adjustments. So as you go around the bed, the bearing just is barely pinched it between the between the the bed and the shuttle, and then then you you get rid of your bearing, okay, and then what you do is you still don't turn the machine on. You put the bed in the middle somewhere, and you move the extruder to the very edge of your aluminum bed you know somewhere over there and then what you do is you move the left z-axis lead rod um until just the extruder just hits the bed and what i like to use is one of the most accurate and consistent pieces of paper you're ever going to find and that is a magic card they come out of the factory identical, and you just slide it under, and oh, it's just scratching because I've because I've already done this, and then you just you just wait for that card to scratch a bit. You could use a Pokemon card or a business card, um, but I use magic cards because I have them, and they are always the same every time. Uh, don't use a foil; just use a, a regular common. And then and then you scratchy scratchy. Then you move it up and you move it down till it's just scratchy scratchy. Then you move it all the way over, and you move it to this side. Oh, and I can feel it scratchy, scratchy. But then suppose it's not scratchy, scratchy. You move this, you manually spin it up and down until it just until it just hits that card. Then you go back and forth a couple times. You might have to do that. And then once the left and right side of the bed is calibrated, what you've done is you've leveled your bed in regards to itself and you've calibrated each Z motor in regards to itself. So now, not only will this move perfectly left and right, it will do so parallel to your board, to your bed. Now, move this over to the side, once you've done all that, and turn the machine on. Once you turn the machine on, and you know, I got a cheap one, so I gotta replace this fan. This is fun, ready? Up there, oh, come on, turn off. Uh, oh well. So then what you do is you, you go onto your computer system here and you go into quick settings and you go to home all. Do that. I like to do it like three times. I do it like three times, but for in this for this case, I'm just going to do it once. Then, after you do the home all situation, you go and turn off your printer again. Now, turn off your printer. Now, because what, what you've done is you've homed all, so that just changed the Z axis because it calibrated it based on your Z axis button down here, which you know are th the most inaccurate things that they that they make what they should do to that z-axis uh rocker switch 
which is down down there, is they should just make it a, a button, a momentary button. They should get rid of this spring because it doesn't do a very good job and it puts play in the precision of the button push. Regardless of that, um, now what you're going to do is you're going to do a four point uh, bed calibration. Now that you've got your z-axis um, synchronized, you're going to move your extruder to the four corners and now you're going to put that card back underneath and you know mine scratches because it's, it's calibrated and, but you see how I can still move it you know but it, it gets stuck it's stuck under there you know and if you were to look at the card you'd see little scratch lines so and then what you're going to do is you're only going to move the screws you're not going to move anything else just the screws you change the screw do 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 you go up and down you, you, you test it then you go to, then you go to this corner moving it manually you test it oh there it is nice and scratchy but then if it's not scratchy you got to tweak the screw until it just goes scratchy you're gonna do that to all four corners you're gonna do that to that corner oh you know that corner is a scorch loose very fun let's tight let's loosen it up that's counterclockwise raises your bed zip just that was a quarter turn oh yeah that's a little bit more firm now we're going to go down here. There it is. Very firm. Firm indeed. Actually, you know what? I'm going to loosen that puppy a little bit too. Just a quarter turn. zippity doo da. There we go. That is very firm. All right. Now we're going to go to the middle. You might have to do that like four times. Corner, corner, go diagonal. It doesn't matter. You're going to adjust it. Test the middle. Very firm. Now you have a calibrated printer. Go ahead and make a model that's, you know, five or six centimeters big. Give it a, a brim or a skirt that's bigger than five passes. And go ahead and, and make sure you do a little bleed on your, your filament. And then when you print, if you don't see that skirt or brim laying down material within the first, I don't know, centimeter or two of the movement, chances are you're still too far away from your bed and you got to go closer. That's, of course, if you've got your filament primed and ready to go. If your filament's not primed, you might have to give it six to ten centimeters. It might, it might only make it, you know, it might start laying down material, you know, as far as halfway through the first pass. Um, that, again, uh, is fine. Is now what you want to look for on your print is not a raised line of filament, but a flat, slightly squished line of your brim, and that's going to give you a little bit of elephant foot on your first layer. But I don't care. I think elephant foot means you did a great job. Elephant foot is the sign of a fantastic calibration. You get an exacto knife and take off your elephant foot. Um, if you need the industrial accuracy of no elephant foot, why do you have an ANET A8? Why do you have a Tronxy? You need to be spending $150 on a wrench, not a printer. You need to spend $5,000 on a printer if you need to have no elephant foot in your prints and for the accuracy of, you know, sub one-tenth of a millimeter. Um, but... If you don't want to use glue, and you don't want to use a lot of fancy stuff, and you just want to use painter's tape, and your prints are going to be about 0.2 millimeters in stack resolution, you don't need anything else other than really good calibration. This does not have a sensor. This, the, you know, this doesn't have any of that. And, you know, I just printed this uh, lid to a dumpster. And, you know, it's massive. It's big. And there it is, flat. You know, flat on the bed. It, and I, I, had a, I had a brim. I had a brim around this. Um, but, you know, it, it, printed, it printed flat. That, it, that, and that's even with the little... It was high over here just by a scorch. Um, so give that a try. Make sure you use, you know, a bearing or something else that has a consistent, you know, and very firm width. You could probably use a lighter... I probably, you probably could use this. Um, no, you, I, you probably should use something thinner. The farther down you go, the better, because then you won't run the risk of hitting your bed with your extruder nozzle, which, you know, I see a ton of people scraping their beds up 
And, you know, I've been printing for two years and I've never managed to scrape my my bed. I guess I just... I knock, on, knock on bed. I guess I just got lucky. So, all right. I hope this helps people leveling their beds and getting fantastic 3D prints. Um, you know. All right. Good luck.